Okay. Hello, my name is Altan Toya and I'm from the National Association of Mongolian Agricultural Cooperatives and I also work as a uh, NIA coordinator for the APFP ERISE and E4-4A in Mongolia. So today I'm going to briefly introduce uh, how ERISE implemented in Mongolia and what was the lessons learned, what we have gained, and uh, so on. So we started into the agreement with the uh, AFA on the February two, two, uh, 2021 until the March end of the March 2022. The amount received for the rise fund was a 200,000 US dollar, and the total number of the uh, recipients or the individual herders were 4,140. So as a, we, we uh, gave loans to the agricultural cooperatives as a working capital. So 13 cooperatives received the, sorry, there is a mistake, 13 cooperatives received the loan during the four product cycles, namely for the cashmere, wool, milk, meat, hide and skin. So agricultural uh, products in Mongolia are very seasonal. So we targeted four ma major products in the livestock uh, sector. So 13 cooperatives, most of them, uh, they used it for the uh, as a working capital, they bought the members' products and sold to the market. So this was a very, uh, very necessary activity during the pandemic where the lockdown was imposed in the country and transportation was restricted. So not a middleman or processing factories can come to the herders and buy their products. So this was a good opportunity for the cooperatives to implement this project and same time to gain members trust and give the new services to the members. So uh, it was, a, uh, as I told you before, recycled, uh, it's uh, cycled four, four times. So it was a, the total amount was a 576,701 US dollar. So we, uh, targeted 4,140 herders. So main commodities was the cashmere, wool, milk, and meat, and sheep hide, and sheep skin, and cow hide. So uh, during the implementation of the ERISE, many cooperatives are newly entered into the contracts, like Alton Shirid Cooperative uh, contracted the processing, cashmere processing, company coil and still this year after the ERISE is, uh, implementation was over, but still the oil cashmere uh, company wanted to uh, contract our cooperative. So I, get, uh, I hope that this uh, mutual partnership will continue in the future. The another cooperative also uh, entered into the agreement with the largest uh, carpet factory in Mongolia uh, so which makes carpets from the pure 100% sheep wool. So also they uh, gave a higher price, same time they want to continue this uh, contract with our cooperative. Uh, two cooperatives, one is Ekshijir, the they exported uh, wool, sheep wool to the China, and another secondary cooperative, Sustainable Cashmere Cooperative, exported to the European Union countries, cashmere. So they all added the value. They washed the wool and cashmere and uh, scoured them and exported. So it was a very good value addition and members were very happy to receive a higher market price. So the ERISE impacts uh, was the, the major problems and challenges the farmers encountered during the COVID was the uh, the closure of the borders of our neighboring countries, uh, transportation limits, so uh, people cannot move freely, 
not even within the country, but even in the village. So it was a very strict lockdown and it was uh, very difficult for the herders to sell their uh, cashmere wool and other commodities. Uh, also, um, there is also, uh, some cooperatives when they started uh, collecting the products from its members, then sudden lockdowns were imposed by the central and local governments, and then they uh, had to stop uh, their collection of the materials of the members. That means that members were not able to have an income to sustain their livelihood. And also there is a, the transportation cost increased a lot. Uh, the fuel cost increased, the transportation cost increased. So how ERIS helped to tackle these problems is um, they contracted with the local government. They found the transportation company which had the uh, permission to move uh, the goods within the country. So um, they started the national companies. They normally they deal with the middlemen, but this time because middlemen could not uh, move freely, they started to contract uh, with our cooperatives, which was a, a very good start for the cooperatives to have a uh, permanent market. And also, um, it uh, the ERIS helped members to have a uh, income and also increased income. So I will explain later what is the, the how the ERIS increased our members' income. Uh, okay, so ERIS, almost half of the total beneficiaries of our ERIS funds were women. 45.6% we reached women and it ensured the woman income during the pandemic. And in the loan recipient cooperatives, Two cooperatives had a woman chair and one cooperative had a woman manager. So we uh, tried to involve as many women as we can. Impact on youth is also was very high. So 61.9% of the total beneficiaries of the young people and young youth uh, members of the cooperatives and also uh, uh, children of our members. So for the young people, it's really difficult to have access to the loan and they always had the financial shortages. So ERIS helped them uh, to sell their product through the cooperative to the processing companies. So ERIS impact on the households is insured. Of course, the first it's insured household income. So provided financial support for continuing uh, services of the cooperative to its members. So means the cooperative was alive during the pandemic. So most of the recipient cooperatives contracted processors and two cooperatives were able uh, to uh, export their uh, products collected from the herders. Uh, herders and farmers received additional income as uh, cooperatives uh, contracted the processing factories with a higher price than in the local market because village price and the city and town price are different. So they managed to contract in the, in the bigger market price. And also they distributed some patronage refund to their members and dividends. So in some cooperatives developed new services for its members. So ERIS provided financial support to NFOs with minimum requirements. For the, uh, our farmer organizations, it's very difficult to reach financial institutions to get uh, loans and other uh, financial products because their requirements are very high. They ask a very high collateral requirement, a lot of papers, a lot of bureaucracy. So ERIS, had a, we had a very minimum requirements. Thus, these NFOs, uh, these uh, farmer organizations gained experience in the managing loans, especially short-term loans per product. 
and developed new services to their members. And also, um, like having these services during the pandemic time and lockdowns increase uh, confidence and trust of members to the cooperative and also attracted other herders to the cooperative. So this is a very good gain from the ERIs. And, and challenges, of course, we had the challenges in country during the implementation and actions taken. So lockdowns, this is was a, a big uh, challenge we faced. So the cooperative di uh, directors and chairperson could not come to the uh, city and do the contracts with us, uh, like uh, doing the due diligence of the cooperatives. This all was done via mobile phone. Facebook is a very common social application here used by the herders and farmers. So we use the Facebook application and Zoom and email to contract and receive their agreements on time, their papers and necessary things on time. We use this communication um, tools. Uh, due to the short term of the loan, some cooperatives uh, faced difficulties collecting during the lockdown, collecting the farmer products, marketing them, and then receiving their repayment back from the processing factories. Because you know, lockdown delayed all these activities and everything was in a slow motion. So this was a challenge. And we have extended three cooperatives contracts to allow them to collect payment from the processing companies. Even they uh, shipped the product on time, the payment was uh, uh, very slow because in some lockdowns, all banks and offices were closed and especially the financial institutions were closed. So payment was delayed in, in many cases. Uh, another challenge is uh, receive all necessary data from the cooperatives was a big challenge. So we again use the communications via mobile, FP chat, Zoom, emails. So we had a, a, a lot of phone calls to collect all this data. And also, of course, uh, to secure the repayment of the ERIs, we asked for the collateral. And then uh, most of the cooperatives, their uh, property is the common property of the members and they couldn't get the permission from the members through, during the lockdown. So the chairman, chairperson or board of directors members uh, used as a collateral their own property. Okay, lessons learned uh, from this uh, ERISE implementation. Uh, you know that uh, the fund should be aligned with the local agricultural season because uh, last year it was really good, but in the future we really want to be aligned in the agricultural season. Like this year already our Kashmir season is now over, so we really need to be aligned with the season. Uh, strict beneficiary number for the small country like Mongolia was a problem for us because uh, the minimum requirement for the membership of the recipient cooperative was 150 and above. So most of our cooperatives has a lesser membership. So um, they were willing to apply for the rice fund, but this was a restriction for them. Uh, we should have a more simple ways to get, uh, have a contract with the cooperatives and uh, the time frame of the loan uh, should be a more flexible uh, due to the uh, collecting materials and selling and receiving payments. And then also the training needed for the cooperative leaders on how to monitor and collect the data on the implementation of the project also training needed for the cooperative leaders uh, to enter into the contracts and agreements. Um, so takeaway points from the ERIs is, of course, 
the most cooperatives and I'm sure the most farmer organizations have uh, faced difficulties to have a working capital during the agricultural peak seasons. Like in our terms, is uh, uh, livestock is the major agriculture uh, in Mongolia. So we have a very short and uh, agricultural seasons and then the cooperatives needs to compete with the middleman to collect the products from its members so it was a, a very good uh, initiative to erase was a very good initiative to help our members during the pandemic and lockdown and we really want that this program will be continued and uh, help to the farmer organizations to develop new services to its members. So thank you so much for your attention.